everybody. Today I have an interview with an expert in media studies from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. His name is Ian Condry and he's the Associate Director of the Comparative Media Studies Program. We sat down to talk about research and specific projects going on in the program. We also had an opportunity to discuss his expertise, which is Japan and globalization. He expressed the importance of the underground comic community and the animation culture, and he also recognizes its anti-corporate ways. And he also believes this is a lot of the reason for its massive following. To learn more about what you see today in the interview, please visit our blog at silvercirclemovie.blogspot.com. All right, everyone, this is Ian Condry. He's the Associate Director of the Comparative Media Studies Program at MIT. Um, he's a cultural anthropologist who's been focusing on contemporary Japan, and he's also published a book called Hip Hop in Japan, Rap and the Paths of Cultural Globalization. So Ian, thanks for sitting down with us today. Um, for someone who's unfamiliar with the CMS program at MIT, could you give them just a brief overview of what it's about and some of the achievements and research you guys have made? Sure. So the Comparative Media Studies program has a 10-year history here at MIT. It is uh, made up of a number of uh, faculty members from a variety of departments, uh, writing, literature, foreign languages and literature is where I'm based, uh, music and theater arts, anthropology, um, and some other, other uh, departments as well. Uh, we have a master's in science program, uh, it takes about 10 students per year. Uh, we have a strong undergraduate major uh, in comparative media studies. And we have a number of research projects uh, that aim to bridge understandings of the humanities with uh, advances in media. Uh, so projects like New Media Literacies, uh, uh, Gambit, which is a Singapore MIT uh, game lab, makes uh, uh, games but also does research in what games can do. There's the Education Arcade that looks at using games to uh, teach, uh, especially at the secondary level. Uh, one of the projects there is with the Smithsonian, uh, a massively online game uh, called Mass Extinction, uh, looking at the loss of species. And more particularly, you've been studying Japan and globalization. So what forms of media have you focused on? Right, so I'm a cultural anthropologist uh, by training, which means that I'm interested in contemporary culture, uh, and especially through uh, the practice of fieldwork, uh, participant observation fieldwork, uh, and ethnography, which is trying to portray uh, what the world looks like uh, from people participating in a certain community. My new project is looking at Japanese animation, uh, which is another cultural form that's going global, uh, from Japan uh, to the world, uh, unlike hip hop, which is from the US to the world. And I guess what links these two forms for me is that they're both examples of culture that were seen as not very important by governments, uh, corporations, big corporations. Something like Walmart or Levi's or Coca-Cola or McDonald's, we sort of understand their globalization as riding on the tails of massive uh, businesses. Uh, but things like hip hop and anime operate quite differently. Right? It's a kind of globalization from below, where what drives the spread of these cultural forms and practices uh, is something different, right? It's independent grassroots efforts at first uh, that maybe later get picked up by big corporations. Uh, but what initially drives their flow around the world are these other kinds of processes. Uh, and for me, that's the interesting question. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things that we know should happen in the world, human rights, environmentalism, thing, controlling the power of major corporations, rethinking how governments think about militarism, human rights, humanitarian relief. These are all sort of goals that a lot of people uh, agree we need to do something about, and yet somehow there seems to be a lack of political will, right? Or it's the kind of things that corporations don't jump right on into to say, okay, we can make money on this. Uh, I guess what I've believe, uh, what I believe is that there are ways in which, uh, by learning from these other forms that go global without the support mm -hmm. of big corporations, without the support of governments initially, uh, that we can learn from that. Grassroots networks uh, are huge and important, and things that begin underground often have the kind of intense interaction that's necessary to really bring the quality of art uh, uh, and communication to higher levels. Uh, and so. I think that uh, it's, things like comic books are already becoming more mainstream. I think the, 
the attention of Hollywood movies helps sort of break through, in part because we get beat you know, over the head for months and months before The Watchmen comes out, and people say, what's The Watchmen? And you know, for those of us who know The Watchmen, we say, you idiot, that's it's one of the greatest comic books ever, uh, but you don't know, that's all. And, and it takes it coming into uh, uh, mainstream commercials on TV to get people uh, to know about it, but I think that the health of a lot of these media forms, whether it's graphic novels or animation uh, or indie films, uh, it depends on really a smaller group. It depends on many of those people yeah, waiting to get inside, but at least the people showing up to these conventions who really care. Uh, and I think what we're going to see, especially as social media open up access uh, to a wider range of media forms, is that those things that are driven by a political economy of passion uh, are actually the things that will last. Uh, and that our desire to have things that are the political economy of money uh, may or may not last, uh, but at least uh, they uh, have the disadvantage of not building on a kind of love and intense energy uh, mm -hmm. that really makes these things important. When it comes to our particular project, we are using two different forms of media, both of which I'm sure you're very familiar with, um, a graphic novel, mm -hmm. so we're going into the comic community, and then film industry. Uh -huh. So have, how have you seen those two forms of media work together? Well, in Japan they're very closely related, for sure, that 60% uh, of all Japanese animation is based on uh, manga, right? Japanese comic books. Uh, so there's a very tight connection. Um, one of the things I learned doing field work in Japanese animation studios was that I found that often, and maybe not always, but often they think of the creation of a new film or a new manga or a new animated uh, TV series in terms of the characters. Astro Boy, Pikachu, um, Harvey, the, these various characters who can move across media, right? So you have something like the melancholy of uh, Haruhi Suzumiya starts as a novel uh, and becomes an animated series. Then there are toys, and then there are games, and then there are variations on those games. And what links them is not so much uh, the story. In fact, the story goes off in lots of directions, uh, but it's the characters. And it's this group of characters who are connected by certain kinds of dramatic premises and living in a certain kind of world, uh, that it's that combination of character, premises, and worldview that make up uh, this transmedia phenomenon. Do you have a theory behind the um, viral marketing that takes place online? Yes, I suppose I do, although it's only a partial theory. Uh, I don't have a, the, the full answer. Uh, and that to say this is a metaphor is useful because it breaks down that, that TV image, it seems to me, of what media is, which is to say there are big broadcasters, they select, they curate what is the media out there, and they give it to a waiting audience, right? So this is one of the ways we've thought about media. Uh, viral says, no, it operates very differently than that. It operates like gossip. In the Comparative Media Studies program, are there any milestones that we should be looking forward to to hear about in the near future? Uh, we're going to have some new uh, research projects in the work as well, uh, in the works as well, especially I think around social media, civic media, uh, activism, different kinds of literacy, uh, thinking about what digital literacy uh, for education will mean in the future, uh, thinking about how the humanities, uh, which has often been uh, seen as an area of scholarship that focuses on sitting back and analyzing objects to say whether it's books or, uh, or cultures or uh, or films to say, no, it's a, what we want to do at, at CMS is apply humanities and take that kind of understanding of history, of across media, of across nations, and say, how can we put that back out in the world and do things? How did the ROFL con go Great. over the weekend? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I don't know. the. Uh, you couldn't get in. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sold out. Um, you know, no, it was a wonderful uh, event. and. Uh, uh, I went to the keynote address and uh, yeah, where in the hell in the world is Matt? The guy was there, he got up and did his dance and uh, yeah, I felt like I was in the, the world of internet royalty. Uh, so it was really something to see. Great. Well, thank you very much for sitting down with us today. Thanks for and having me. And we'll, we'll keep an eye out for anything else coming out of the CMS program. Okay.